So I think we're just waiting on our on our host and a couple of other people and we'll get started as soon as I see them pop in. Sounds great. Um, should I change anything in my title to indicate where I come from or is that, is that okay? No, you're fine. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. Hi, Scott. Hi, hello. <laughs> hey, Nate, you look okay. a little bent out of shape there. Huh? It said Nate looks a little bent out of shape there. Hey, it's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've had meetings with all of you in the last two days, in one meeting or the other. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the last 30 minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I know Jan is coming. <laughs> Still a little before two. Mary, is there a presentation or anything you need to share or? Uh, we did just put some slides together to give people something to look at other than us. <laughs> and also, <clears throat> I think Jan will be doing some live uh, sharing of his screen to show things like Power Apps. Um, so yeah. Okay. So if it's possible for Jan and me to share our screens, that would be great. Yep, I just changed that setting for you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello. How are you on? Sam, I gotta say, I love those glasses. Right? I said the same thing. I love those. <laughs> they're Bono inspired. <laughs> nice. I think they're mood enhancers. <laughs> you can put that to your eyes. Yeah. So all over you to me, so by wearing these glasses, everybody good looking guys and beautiful ladies. <laughs> Greg, are you, are you really coming to us from a Japanese garden? Oh, of course, yeah. I put this together just this last weekend. <laughs> yeah. Little yard project. <laughs> Well, Mike, where did you travel to? Well, I took this photo about 20 years ago when we lived in Spain, and that's uh, Gibraltar in back of us. Wow. Yeah. All right. Huh. So it is a rock of Gibraltar. It certainly is, and you can drive <laughs> nearly all the way to the top of it. <laughs> it's an incredible sight. It is. And I heard that straight has really good tuna. I saw a tuna documentary and they talked about Gibraltar being a place that there's a lot of tuna. Huh. It's true. Yeah. The Mediterranean is full of fish, but not as much as it used to be. But that's true about oceans in general. Yeah. I was going to say, we learned recently this year that Westport is another like major, major center for tuna fishing throughout the year and I didn't realize like one of the biggest ones on the west coast I'm like what really <laughs> so yeah so we're just waiting for a few more people just yeah, yeah just a couple Mary did you want to share your screen or should I share the powerpoint I think you start you're starting off right so I can share or should I, I can go ahead. Uh, I don't have, why don't you go ahead, John, because I think we would switch over to you anyway when you demo the, uh, the SharePoint site and um, the okay. Power Apps. And then I'll just keep it over on the side for me. 
Well, I'll go ahead and make just a couple of introductory remarks and people can join as, as they do and then we can roll into the, the training. Thank you all for being here today. Um, as you are well aware, we have had a great deal of change in the last couple of years here at CityU and much of it has been focused on trying to revamp our processes to make them more consistent, more efficient, um, and better utilize our resources to create a, a higher quality experience for our students. So at, at the turn of the year, I was kind of looking back at all the things we've done and, and where we were with projects and, and processes and working with um, Mary and Jan and Mariah, um, I felt like this was, we're, we're finally at a place, I think, where most of these new processes are launching and functioning. And so I wanted to make sure that everyone was on the same page and understood where we were, what changes have been made, what new processes and expectations are in place. Uh, and so this series of trainings is really intended to lay that out for everyone. So you may have heard parts of this, um, parts of some of the trainings, maybe things that you've heard or, or participated in already, but this is really just aimed at level setting so that we're all on the same uh, page and understand what the new processes are and, and, and a forum for us to ask questions and, and, and make sure that we have a shared understanding of, of how we're moving forward. So the first one today is Jan and Mary talking about our new curriculum development processes and the work with the subject matter experts. Uh, when I undertook the reorganization of academic affairs, I really wanted to put a greater emphasis on the role of the Center for Curriculum and Instruction. Uh, with the idea that we have this amazing team of people who have degrees in designing courses and curriculum. Uh, and so I really wanted to leverage that talent that we have on campus in a way that um, we had been to a certain extent in some areas on campus, but uh, it was not consistent and it wasn't across the board. So revamping the role of, of, of CCI and, and really making it more of a partnership with the subject matter expertise that we have in our academic programs with their expertise in curriculum and course design, uh, I think is really gonna help us in the, the long run in improving our programs and achieving our own aims of continuous improvement, as well as fulfilling the expectations of our students, our accrediting bodies, our regulators, all those folks that, that look at what we do and, and how we do it. So uh, I'm really excited with the work that they've done so far. Mary and Jan have done tremendous amounts of work to pull these processes together. Uh, and I'm really excited for them to be able to present them to you all today. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Thanks. I'll share my screen one second. Go ahead there. and share your screen. And I'll just reiterate what Scott shared, which is that we have gone through an amazing amount of change in the last year. Um, and some of that change was expedited as a result of the data incursion. And <clears throat> so we, it wasn't always timed exactly as we wanted it to be timed, um, but we've made a lot of progress. We've listened to the feedback from the stakeholders that we've worked with and have improved some of those processes and we'll continue to work on doing that going forward. Um, go ahead, Jan. Can you so, all see the slides? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, Scott gave an overview of, of the work of the Center for Curriculum and Instruction. Uh, he has tasked us with providing support for curriculum development at CityU. Um, Jan is currently serving as chair of the curriculum committee and that work has shifted its focus from being strictly a, the, the approval body that everything has to go through and sometimes has to go through multiple times to being more of a peer review body for major uh, changes to curriculum, the development of new programs, things like that. And that's a work in progress, understanding um, you know, how much material, how, how much change in a given course or a program would then warrant having that peer reviewed by the curriculum committee. Um, and then the bulk of the work that the team is doing is just managing those individual course development and uh, project development activities that are happening in academics, bringing together the instructional designers with the subject matter expert, 
discovering the needs and building out a scope of work and making a plan to getting that work completed by the approval deadlines. Uh, we also have faculty development within our team. Right now, it's been primarily focused on the new faculty orientation, working to modularize it so that it can meet the needs of different programs, depending on if they're primarily in person or online, um, or where there are differences in practices. Uh, for example, things maybe in British Columbia are slightly different than they are in Washington State. And so that's an evolving process with hopes that we can offer more ongoing faculty development as well. Right now that's staffed at just a 0.5 position. Um, and so the primary focus has been on updating the new faculty orientation. And then the team provides Blackboard support. And I know that sometimes uh, there's a little bit of confusion um, because the nature of the support CCI provides is on best practices for how to use our learning management system and <clears throat> levels of troubleshooting that have to do with features of Blackboard that aren't working for faculty. IT has taken on some of the management of our learning management system, things like creating dev shells, creating master shells, restoring shells, things like that. For your convenience, we put links to all of that on our SharePoint site because people were used to going to one place to get that information, but those requests actually go to a IT department and Christian Leone is a lead over there on fulfilling those requests. Uh, go ahead, John. And I apologize because the slides do not look this way, <laughs> scrunched together on our presentation, but Zoom is mashing them in. So, you know, where do you find information about CCI? Uh, you can find it on SharePoint. We have a pretty detailed site built out uh, with on the left menu items that you would navigate to frequently, and then a lot more detail in the center columns of the page. Uh, we're also in Power Apps. Arlene is increasingly uh, helping to develop solutions there where faculty are spending time nominating other faculty for courses and doing academic work. And we also have a faculty development website and the URL for that is right here. Um, Jan, do you want to pull up the SharePoint site and can you share that? I know Mariah sent that out um, as a link in the meeting. Can you all see or does it need to yeah. be bigger? bigger? Yep, I can see Power Apps. And do you also have the CCI SharePoint site pulled up? Okay. So you can see it's a very uh, full site. <laughs> um, on the left side, we have, and I'm going to um, shift this over to, oops, excuse me. Um, as I said, the left menu has what we think you would be accessing most of the time, uh, information on our curriculum deadlines, access to the course development request forms, um, a link to the course proposals, that's the repository that houses any syllabi that have been updated and um, that CCI has been involved in those projects with. Uh, there's also a link to the program development request form, a similar document library to program proposals. So that would be um, the documentation of programs that have been approved through Academic Affairs Council. We have a link to all known program design guides, uh, templates for curriculum design, and the curriculum development resources is a work in progress. It's a wiki with pages that have more detail for you on our curriculum development processes 
We're also starting to build out a D2L migration FAQ there as we learn more about that, uh, which is still slated to kick off perhaps in April. Um, and then links to forms for video requests and video captioning requests help there. But as you look at the center of the page, you'll see that there's a lot of other resources that may be of use to you as well. Um, there's a link to the curriculum deadlines that uh, have been approved effective January 1st of this year. There's a link under course development to the subject matter expert fee scale that we're currently using. Um, so I encourage you to spend time on your own on the site poking around. And then if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Jan, me, or uh, the instructional designers that meet with you on a quarterly basis. Should I go um, to the apps? Yeah, why don't you walk through the process first and on that slide and then go to Power Apps. All right, um, I also want to point out our faculty development site. Let me just open yeah. that up. Actually, we, just by by roll call, how many of you have ever been on this faculty development website? Mike, I see one <laughs> hand up. Uh, Brian has been there. Uh, okay, Joel. Terry, so actually this is wonderful Terry. to know because um, we were wondering <laughs> how, how, how used uh, this site is and keeping it updated and making it relevant to you and your faculty. But... Um, Christine Malone has taken this on as uh, her wheelhouse together with her faculty development work. Um, any suggestions for articles or improvements are always welcome and please send them to Christine um, as we are wanting to make this site an organic community of practice place for our faculty. Um, I will say it's known that we have the former CDS development manuals on the site and Christine is working to uh, update those and in some cases replace the links and have them just point to the new SharePoint site. All right, so let me go to our Power Apps. So when you are on our SharePoint site and you click on either the course development request form or course program development request form, where that gets you is to this site um, and in particular to this piece here. Um, you click into here. Anytime you involve CCI, either at a course revision that does not involve curriculum committee review, or that does, uh, or that, uh, that doesn't, you always want to basically create a ticket for us, so that we can match the instructional designers, uh, figure out resources, match it um, to our current projects. Um, uh, so that we are able to plan ahead and um, serve you the best that we can. Um, as you can see in here, this is also a great way for all of you to know what's, what we're doing, what we're up to. So going in here gives you a pretty good overview of the curriculum revisions and program work that we're currently involved in um, and which instructional designer is assigned. But if you would... Um, if you click in into making a new request, this is really only the conversation starter that initiates the process with our instructional design team. As soon as they receive this, they will contact you to go over the details, work with you on a scope document. If it's a course revision, um, um, converse with you about nominating the correct uh, subject matter expert if there is one, at what level that a subject matter expert would be in would be employed for this project um, using the fee schedule that we have that was approved by Scott. And um, everything in here is really straightforward and allows you to ju just very basically let us know what it is you need. Um, and the details of that will be, will be completed as you're working with your matched instructional designer. Um, certainly, I hope that having created this outreach program and all of you having one instructional designer that is your point person has helped in socializing some of these uh, new processes, but also for you to have clarity of who to contact. Um, now there have been questions here and there about, well, is Sophie always going to work with me on a project? 
No, um, you know, there may be instances where you have a bigger project and more people on our team will actually be involved. Really the matching process is for having a direct channel of communication with CCI on your instructional design needs. Um, so any questions on filling this form? Did, did some of you already had a chance to work in this? I know Terry, uh, you learned the other day that you didn't have permissions. Um, should that be the case, please let us know. That's an easy fix um, if you haven't been able to access this. Um, otherwise, your instruction designer is happy to walk you through this the first time you're using this. Um, but without this request form, really, we, we won't be able to begin the work with you. So always as a first step, just go in here and uh, fill this out. Um, I know, Steve, you, were, you had a question for me yesterday about is this a curriculum committee review question or not? Regardless, filling out this form will get you the right person and get you the help that you need um, to determine next steps. I just wrote down to do it on my calendar. Okay. And I also say, I, I want to say the intent of this is not to, you don't need to provide a lot of detail here. And it's uh, the data that we get from this is used by multiple stakeholders across the university, including Melissa Meekham's team who updates PeopleSoft. So the goal is just to briefly fill out the form um, under the, the bottom drop down menu that says the development uh, revision request, you have an opportunity to specify the nature of the change. So if all you're doing is changing a course resource over in Leganto, um, you could fill out a request and just indicate it's just a course resource change. Steve, in your case, you're maybe modifying some assignments. Maybe it's just the narrative. Maybe it's not the rubric. So you would just check those two items. We're hoping to be able to, over time, to get have more data about just the scope of change in curriculum that's going on at CityU and have it in a format that we can then report out onto some of our stakeholders as well. So Mary, um, mm -hmm. quick question. Um, just so I know, and I'm only asking because I think it may help others as well. When we're just doing these minor changes, understand perfectly why the procedure and, and following it would would work and help with math. Uh, I don't know if that's on Zoom or it's a that's an Amber alert. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Can yeah. you still hear me? Uh, yeah, I can still hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, but if we're doing those, my understanding, and maybe I was just totally wrong was to do those kind of small changes, not changing percentages, not changing course title, not doing role, could essentially be done without having to go through multiple quarters to do that. So if I had a course that I wanted to change a little bit of the guts of for the summer, that's, if I can, I would do that by April 1, but it should be okay. And I'm a little confused whether this contemplates a longer process. I don't think it contemplates a longer process. We do ask that you just fill out one of these forms and say, this is happening. You know, one of the designers is gonna reach out to you and you can say, this is all I'm doing and that's fine. Okay. It all probably, right. if it's minor, it's not gonna to have to go through curriculum committee. We're not, we're trying to streamline processes, not make them more difficult. Uh -huh. But if you think about this, um, we don't have our syllabus management system up yet. Right. But we are working actively on that. Mm -hmm. And so CCI has a need to know about those changes. So if an assignment changes, then the syllabus changes and then the Blackboard shell changes. You know, you can just, it, it maybe if that's a minor change, you just update the syllabus you send it to, um, give it to the instructional designer or send it to Jan and say, we've made some assignment changes. It's not gonna go through curriculum committee. We're gonna put mm -hmm. it in the course proposal document library for now, because that's where we're keeping that information until the syllabus system is live. And, but if it's, for example, I'm just trying to clarify yeah. it again. If I'm, if I'm playing too much small ball, just tell me to be quiet. Um, if it's something, for example, where I wouldn't even change the syllabus necessarily, I would just be changing the rubrics for a particular assignment. Same procedure that way? Well, um, I, I mean, 
once you start changing a rubric, uh, especially if you're adding or subtracting a criterion in a rubric, that really is a question to my mind, having, without having looked into the details yet, as I said in my email to you about the context, uh, it changes the alignment between your assignment expectations as well as the outcomes in your course because the rubric is the centralizing piece between those. Um, so that, to my mind, would be a bigger change um, where it would definitely be advisable to work with instructional designer. Um, if it's a clarification of a rubric that doesn't really have impact the outcomes or the assignment description and expectation, then that could be dealt with at the level of the instructional designer support without it necessarily having to be approved by curriculum committee. Regardless, we would still want this updated syllabus with the new updated rubric in the repository so that once we move to our new syllabus manager, all of this information is up to date because the risk is if we don't do this, by the time you have updated a number of courses and we move to the syllabus manager, which gets populated with old data, uh, that that just creates cleanup work in the future. So if I understand, I'll just, I'll just shorten it up this way. There's kind of both process and content concerns. For the process, there's no reason why, and you'd want me to um, work, in my case, it would be with Matt to do this. And then when it comes to the content, that's part of what his role it would be with me to decide whether it is something that would require curriculum council approval or not. Yeah, and that, you know, and that goes back to our intention of having the instructional designers help you work on changes that can be made uh, without curriculum committee approval. Um, and that's really the conversation that happens at the curriculum development team conversation that is initiated by this form. Um, but I think the easiest way for all of you to, to see that what's the dividing line between what, when curriculum committee gets involved. The dividing line is if you're changing a course description, if you're changing course outcomes, if you're changing rubrics, summative assignments, all of those key curriculum pieces, that would, that would need to go through curriculum committee um, for peer review. If you're changing anything within your shells in terms of course content that undergirds all of that curriculum, that is really not part of the review process and curriculum committee. Um, so that's, I think, the easiest way to see the dividing line. Of course, there are instances where you realize that one of your rubrics has uh, an editorial mistake um, that wouldn't need to, to go through curriculum committee. This could be fixed at the instructional designer level, but what we still want is we want an updated syllabus that reflects those changes that you've made so that it can populate the syllabus manager. Does that distinction uh, make sense as a general rule? I would, if you're asking me, I get the distinction. I think that in areas where we are constantly changing things in rubrics to match changes that our instructors talk about um, or notice when they teach the class one time or the state adds into requirements, um, it, by saying, by automatically pumping a rubric change other than a typo or an editorial thing over to one side, I could actually see how that could add more time, but I'm not here to debate that. I'm just trying to learn, you know, what you're doing. And well, I'm expressing, yeah. And, so that I know the procedure at least to follow through. Yeah. And so we're asking, I mean, when in question, go ahead and fill out a form. We have a conversation. You show us what it is that you're doing. And then we go from there because I will say we're still like tweaking our understanding of, of the types of work that's going on and where it needs sure. to happen. The intent isn't to hand tie our program directors and managers and make them go through hoops, you know, to get work done yeah. that, is just normal maintenance kind of work for a course. In the future, you know, if you're going into just modifying assignments slightly, maybe to swap out a rubric criteria, 
syllabus manager would be the place that you would be doing that. And then it has a very brief workflow. You know, you go in, you grab the master syllabus, you make a revision to the syllabus, it comes over to CCI. We take a look at it, like, and, and if it's a really small change, it just gets approved. And then you make those updates in your Blackboard shell. We're trying to get to a place where, um, where the program directors and managers can do those kinds of things, maintain their courses without impacting, um, without having to jump through hoops. Uh, we just don't have all of our systems live and in place that we had planned on having before we had to move over to these processes. And that's a result of the data incursion and um, some other complicating factors. So uh, we are asking everybody to just reach out to us first. Yeah. Let's have a conversation. We'll find the quickest way through um, to get the work done and move on. Thank right. you, Jan and, there and Mary. Other I appreciate questions? It. There, there's another question. Greg was asking, how do we know if our request for a SME is approved? So for the subject matter expert fees, what we're doing right now, the Scott's moved that budget over to CCI. And so when the course development request or if it's a, at the program level is submitted, at that time we have that conversation with the program director or manager about the need for subject matter experts, the scope of their work, and if they're work falls within levels one through four for curriculum development. So that we know that in advance, it's recorded, it's clearly communicated to the subject matter expert. Then the instructional designer and the SME work on the project. And when they feel like they've done the work that they were uh, asked to do, they come back to the program director or program manager to review that work. Sometimes what happens, uh, one of our first cases uh, this happened, uh, an expert was hired at uh, subject matter level one. It turns out the work they did was more aligned with subject level three. And so we went ahead and updated the payment that they were gonna be getting at the end of the project based on the work that they did. You'll see there's both some examples of what might be included in the work, but the work um, is also somewhat time-based. So when you start thinking about, you know, I'm gonna hire a subject matter expert and have them contribute to my course, be thinking about about how many hours do you think it would take them to do the type of review, the type of contribution that you have in mind? Because sometimes it's a simple um, update that you're making and it might fall roughly within up to 10 hours. Other times it's really a complete revision of a course or development of a brand new course, and it might fall more in the $1,000 range of payment for them. So you'll know up front at the beginning of the project. And then at the end of the project, you will sign off. You'll go in to update the course development request form and check the box that says that payment is approved, put in the agreed upon amount. An email goes then to the administrative assistant for your school at this time. The administrative assistant for your school will submit the special pay request to the business office and Jan sees that and does a final approval. So, and I see um, Kent, uh, what we're doing is up front, we're going to in the note field or in the scope of work identify the approximate number of hours that the subject matter is expected to contribute to the project. Um, we're trying to, to balance having the information captured on the form that we need without it getting too busy. Um, so I think we'll go through using this a few times, see how it works, and then um, see what additional revisions might be needed. And as always, your instructional designer is um, able to coach you in any of those aspects and filling this out and working through this. Um, you will go into Power Apps at the beginning of a project to initiate it as you would if you go and order your coffee. Um, we'll print out a ticket and we'll make you your coffee, you'll make your latte. And then when you're done, um, you simply approve the payment. And I think 
importantly also about the subject matter experts is that while you determine together with the instructional designer the level of work involved, you are nominating the subject matter expert because you are in the field, you will know who is the person that I want to hire. Um, and then the conversation really is about discovering what is the depth of work involved. Um, and that's really an experiment, e experience piece, right? I'm sure that as you're working with our instructional designers, you'll all learn better which level is the correct level. In the meantime, if an adjustment needs to be made because more work was involved, that's no problem. We can always update this. Yeah, do you want to go back to the slide that, again, just kind of goes through the steps in the process? So, can you all see the slides? Uh, not yet. So am I, am I, am I still, still sharing the browser? I think I may have to share something else here. All right, how's this? Yes. Again, I apologize for the squishiness at the top of the. So we've discussed uh, step one, completing the course development request. Um, please make sure you take a look at the curriculum deadlines. Um, I think, you know, Steve, your question really relates to that. Um, the earlier you, 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 you realize you want to make a change, the better, because you can bring it forward, align it with the curriculum deadlines especially if it involves curriculum committee. Um, then in step two, uh, you will meet with instructional designer that you're matched with to determine the, sco the scope of the work. And to reiterate, our instructional designers are also there to help you in the project management. Rather than you going it alone when you make a larger revision, you have the instructional designer in your corner who can help you manage the project and um, depending on whether or not you have a subject matter expert, you are as a program director becoming much more of a reviewer of work done rather than having to be in the weeds of a particular revision. And uh, the intention here is to uh, free up work for you so you can focus on your faculty relations and on building out the best possible offerings that you can. Um, Step three is setting up of the curriculum development teams. And this is really part of Scott's vision about having a collaborative course revision and program re uh, development process that includes you, subject matter experts, our curriculum designers who are trained in curriculum development, the librarians, uh, depending on whether or not you also involve video and graphics, uh, Pujo, who can help with video production. So really the team effort and collaborative effort is emphasized here in the development process. Um, step four for you would be to review and approve completed work, notifying the school's administrative assist assistant, uh, as Mary just mentioned, uh, when it comes to a special re pay request for the SME payments. Uh, depending on whether or not it is, a, it is a piece that involves peer review through the curriculum committee, all of this work that has happened in the curriculum development teams then prepares your, your revision for the review by the curriculum committee members. Um, and I know a number of you who are on the committee are here with us today. Um, thank you again for all your hard work. I think we have a pretty robust uh, system in place now and um, helping each other out. And then once you have gone through curriculum review, if that's the case, if you if you needed approval, then you send back a clean copy of your syllabus, which gets uploaded into our SharePoint um, repository, but is also archived on the curriculum committee team space. So we have a couple of copies just in case, um, um, uh, dare I say something will happen to our data. And that's really important to up to send a final approved cleaned up version back to us because that then enters into the, into the workflow. Uh, Mary takes this on, uh, Melissa Meekham, uh, it gets into PeopleSoft if it's a catalog change that involves entering uh, data into the catalog. Um, and as we are finally moving into the new watermark systems with the syllabus manager and curriculum manager, 
there will be a, 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 a standing repository of where your course or program sits at a given point in time and is the reference point. Any questions on the six steps here? Brian was asking if, what to do if you don't seem to have access to Power Apps, and that would be uh, contacting Arlene Hickiana, and she'll get you set up with that. Uh, that system is used for multiple things, faculty nominations. Um, uh, I believe I have access to Power Apps. I just don't have access to those forms because I have okay. access to other items. Okay, um, yeah. And I, and I do have a separate question, um, mm -hmm. stemming a little bit from what Steve talked about, but you know, I've worked with you guys quite a bit uh, on a number of courses uh, with the BA Ed programs, but one one of the examples I have that that I that I find to be a very slow process is if we have a course that is already made, nothing's changing in the course, everything's staying the same. For example, we have one that we need to get done that is literally it was a credit change. That was it. Nothing in the course changed. It's field experience. It doesn't require anything beyond that. Um, is there a way to expedite those type of processes? Uh, because as Steve knows, particularly in our alternative route programs, our field experiences are the only place where we really get a lot of wiggle room to adjust credits to allow for more content, uh, where we put people into other uh, more quote unquote traditional courses. So that's, uh, you know, the way the current process is, is I have to go through and, and transfer everything from our old syllabus to the new syllabus template and, and you know, kind of just go through that whole massive process for something that literally isn't changing at all. It's just simply listed as a different credit load. I guess the only thing that I have as, as a question about that, and I also take a step back and say what we're, what we're trying to do is have all program changes, program level changes, go to Academic Affairs Council. They used to go to C the school committee, then Academic Affairs and back to the school committee. We're trying to just have those go through Academic Affairs Council. If you're changing the credit load to a course, I assume that changes the program plan. It's which not is why that program plan because it's alt routes. Alt routes, okay. okay. So it's non-degree. Yeah. So um, I'd be happy to, or Jan would be happy to have that conversation with you. Um, okay. I, I would assume the registrar needs to know that the credit load on the course is changing. Uh, I need to update that in the catalog and we do have an alt routes page in the catalog, which is why we need to just be looped in informationally. Um, and I don't know that a simple credit change when nothing else is changing about the course outcomes or description or anything like that would actually need to go through curriculum committee. Okay. But that because we're populating other systems and we want right. accurate representations, and then um, we're communicating with the uh, with Karen Amen and with Tiffany, who does so. Karen does the updates to PeopleSoft. Tiffany does the updates to the website. All the stakeholders need to be notified, sure. and that's why we're saying let's just start with CCI, <laughs> so we have an idea of everything that's going on, so we can make sure those uh, changes are reflected where they need to be reflected. Sure. Not to slow the process down per se, but Accuracy is good. <laughs> and I, I think Brian in general and everybody, um, you know, I think what we're presenting here is your typical revision, right? Um, in cases where you have a special request, um, a quick conversation with us, um, Mary and myself are more than happy to, to, to look for more efficient ways and making adjustments. Uh, we, for instance, already made one uh, when Leanne, Leanne had presented a, a change to the prerequisite that we had put through curriculum committee a while back and realized that that wasn't really necessary and that we could really shorten this, this process. So um, that's really what, why we're having this conversation today is to learn from you what are ways in which we can be more efficacious in our, in, in our support. Um, and never feel shy to let us know if you feel there's a better way of doing something or there's a quicker way of, of getting you where you need to be. Uh, we're more than willing to, to help with that. Um, any other questions before I move on? I'll just share another example. Kent and I have been working a lot on the counseling courses and particularly for the master courses, master uh, level courses. 
most of the changes had nothing to do with outcomes. It was just that the course descriptions were specific to an emphasis area and they needed to be broadened. So we just worked together offline. We got those changes made. Uh, we did have uh, Kent come to curriculum committee one time to explain, just you know, generally explain the program because there's some things unique to it having to do with the KCREP accreditation and just to share that out so everybody can learn from that. But then the actual implementation of um, getting that information into the systems was handled um, outside of the full peer review. And Mary makes a really critical point about curriculum committee. Curriculum committee is a peer review body. We do approve, but that's really the cherry on the cake. The real work is about interdisciplinary learning about what is happening at City Union and its programs and receiving feedback from non-subject matter experts outside of your school. Conversations in your school about changes, about improvements, they of course can happen at any level at any time. Um, I, I, we, again, we have a number of curriculum committee members here today um, we have all been learning quite a lot about individual programs, about specific accreditation needs. Um, and so even if you do not have something to present in terms of a revision, we have opened our doors to all program directors to come in and give us a talk through where you're at in your program. Let us know what your accreditors want from you and what is difficult to align and uh, so that we can learn and better provide provide better peer review that once you initially come through. I, uh, I think over the last six months or so since we've been online with the curriculum committee, all the members who are standing for two years have learned so much about individual programs and that's really a process that's going to take some time. Uh, but the more we learn about each other, I think the better we can support uh, each other's uh, ideas for improvement. The right, other thing that, well, one other thing is when we talk about program development, this is the other thing at City U, we're really, we've changed the way that we're um, drafting programs, their outcomes, and building those program design guides for program assessment. So it's just another area where everyone will save time if they're making a significant you know, update to a program to first reach out to CCI, fill out the program development request form, let's work together. An example we have is, recently is that the MED in diversity and inclusion in Canada, it started being developed two years ago. It recently came to Academic Affairs Council in that previous form and the program manager or director did a lot of work over winter break to get it ready for academic affairs council but kind of did it in a silo we're now redoing almost all of that work um, so that it aligns with the new format of the programs and that's extra work on the program director's part it's extra work on our part so going forward when there are going to be programmatic changes again just fill out the development request form, we'll have a conversation and figure out um, what kind of support is needed, how much change is needed, and the process for moving that forward. All right, so, and then let me just uh, also mention, of course, the other piece or the other pillars of the Center for Curriculum Instruction, that's our faculty development. I currently spearheaded by Christine Malone. Uh, who is a faculty, so she brings uh, a great perspective uh, for the new faculty orientation, which, as Mary mentioned, is going modular, uh, so allowing for more specificity within each program and needs that you have for bringing your new faculty on board with CDU standards and uh, teaching practices, but of course also the academic integrity training that Christine manages. Um, uh, including other faculty development offerings. And I know she has reached out to many program directors trying to learn more about what your particular needs are. And that's something we want to ramp up and do more of. Um, you know, teaching uh, during COVID has been a big topic uh, uh, that requires attention and others. Um, we also are involved uh, in offering training documentations. Uh, some of you have been involved in the banner training 
Um, we're currently developing a curriculum development microlearnings, uh, which map onto everything we've been talking about here. And in the future, we will also be offering training on D2L and the new learning management system. So in general, uh, on a continuous basis, offering training to all of you and our faculty uh, to do to do what they what you guys all do really well. And uh, Pujo uh, helps with our video requests and captioning requests. Um, we have quite a lot of work uh, with Kathy Cox right now in the webinar series for external relations, which brings in um, pathways for potential students. And Pujo is also helping with the student orientation to Blackboard and in the future D2L. And last but not least, we're really, we're really fortunate to have Arlene on our team who does a lot of business analytics and project management and uh, manages a team of student workers who help with data entry. So great example is uh, you're working with an instruction design on a project. Um, uh, Arlene will, will, will help uh, figure out how our student workers can actually do a build out of a course uh, so that the instructional de design teams can focus on, on the nitty gritty rather than on the data entry into the course shell. So there's a lot of support coming from Arlene and her student workers at that end. And finally, I do want to point out our great team. Um, and uh, their breadth of knowledge and expertise, uh, Christine being doctorally qualified, Brittany with a master's of science and curriculum, Arlene who has a master's in project management, uh, Sophie who holds a master's from the University of Sydney in uh, education, Pujo who is a wonderful expert in everything visual and video, and Matt, uh, our other instructional designer, also having a, um, a background expertise in instructional design and teaching himself. Um, and that is the Center for Curriculum Instruction, at least for today. Um, any additional questions? Uh, I have a question. Yes, Sam. Uh, in case, you know, it was an emergency about the SME, something happened, but that was not requested in advance. Do you have any mechanism to resolve this case? It'd be a conversation, Sam. <laughs> Just, you know, reach out to Jan and let him know what's going on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We recognize yeah. too, we have, um, uh, projects that were in process already with people who were hired already and were quoted a, a rate for doing the work that they're doing on behalf of City U that may not fall in line with that new fee schedule, but we're trying to get everybody back onto the new fee schedule. And part of the idea is that if the instructional designers are involved in the project, they can do some of that lifting. They're already being paid by City U. Uh, we can reduce the cost of subject matter experts overall and really focus the work that they're doing. They don't need to build out the shell physically if they provide all the content for it. Um, so that's a, um, yeah, just a conversation. Okay. And, you know. And, and, and I think in general, Sam and everyone, um, Mary and myself always try to decrease barriers. And at the same time, we also try to empower our team to do the work with you. Um, Personally, I'm not a big fan of always trying to micromanage what Brittany is doing in SBM or what Matt is doing in the School of Ed. Um, they're really great at what they're doing. Um, we have really good internal communication as a team um, with our standard meetings, with our tracking mechanisms, with our uh, general rapport that is very collaborative. And we are trying to extend that out. And of course, there are moments of miscommunication or people mm -hmm. not following through or things happen and life happens. In those instances, um, anytime, let us know. Um, if we are messing up, let us know. Uh, mistakes are part of the game and that's how we learn and that's how we get better. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, and I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. 
<clears throat> you know, I want to I want to express appreciation for <clears throat> the change in perspective that allows us to have conversations about what part of the official process do we really need to go through uh, as, as a course manager, as a program manager to affect the changes we want. Previously, our system has uh, basically run every, every request, both large and small, through the same process. And it has resulted in uh, course managers sometimes feeling a little beaten up for it, for the experience. Uh, so the conversation that the course or program requests are meant to generate, I think do a good job or are at least intended to do a good job of making that route through the approval and officiation process as efficient as possible. And at the same time, <clears throat> I think we have to recognize that it's probably, it probably creates some uncertainty about what that process will involve for some kinds of changes. So I think it's a good move, uh, but, it, but it, uh, it has some questions associated with it yet, especially as systems move online. Thank you, Mike. Also, Mary, this is just my comment. You know, certain point you may have some, this is the one of the top best uh, uh, master's cell example, something like that. Maybe also maybe annual, you know, some kind of a small crypto award that also we can encourage our faculty, hey, then it can be a small token for you. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about, um, and I think right now people, I don't know how much bandwidth they have. Others have uh, CCI is really busy just uh, keeping up with the workflow that's going on now. But uh, CityU has submitted a course previously to Blackboard to have it peer reviewed as part of their exemplary course design program. And that course was recognized as being exemplary in its design and delivery for students. We'd love to have more courses submit for that kind of recognition. Um, we've also talked about there's Quality Matters, which is another program, uh, both having uh, some people at CityU go through that training, uh, but also they've got a process of peer review of courses to uh, provide feedback and give recognition for courses that have exemplary design. We asked our instructional designers to reach out to program directors and find out, you know, if there's a course in their program that they feel is exemplary in its design that we can use as a model and share around for other courses and other programs. So that'll be a work in progress, but yeah, we, we should celebrate those things. Absolutely. Well, thank everybody. Um, and both for your patience over the last year as we've made many of these changes on different timelines than we anticipated um, for engaging with the Center for Curriculum and Instruction team and um, for helping follow processes so that we can just be aware of what's going on and shepherd things through in the most efficient ways possible. And I just want to reiterate, thank you all for attending today. And again, thank you so much to Mary and Jan for the tremendous work that has gone into this. Um, as Mary said at the beginning, I think we wanted much of this rolled out sooner, but uh, a pandemic coupled with a data incursion <laughs> uh, really threw some curveballs our way. So I appreciate their sticking with the process and, and all of your patience uh, for, for letting us work through this. Um, and as with any new process, there'll be some stumbles in the beginning. So I, I appreciate your patience over the next few months as we all get more comfortable with these processes. But um, please do provide any feedback that you have. And I, I really appreciate you all taking the time today. And we'll see you at the next part of our series organized by Mariah, which I don't have the date right at the top of my head, but uh, I, you all have that calendar invite. And we'll see you at the next part of the series. Mariah, I saw her unmute. She's going to tell us the date. <laughs> so the next session is um, introducing program health cards that's happening on March 3rd, and I think it's at 11 a.m. So hopefully that made it to everybody's calendars. If it didn't, let me know and I'll, I'll add you to the meeting. <laughs> Perfect. 
Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, thank thank you, Gary. You. Just wanted to say thank you for going thank through you. the process clearly. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thank you.